Stay warm this season with Ariat jackets and vests available now at Cavenders. Ariat's built for every adventure with cozy warmth and rugged durability. Shop the latest selection of styles for men, women, and kids at your local Cavenders or on Cavenders.com. Need parts now? O'ReillyAuto.com offers in-store pickup, same-day home delivery, or next-day home shipping. Get more parts your way at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Excited to bring you the G5 college football coverage you love each and every week. I am Luke, and I'm joined by my co-host, Justice. It's only taken all year long, but I've kind of figured out the finger pointing. I got it. <laughs> we are only three subscribers away from 500 on YouTube. So wherever you are watching or listening to us, we would greatly appreciate you heading over to YouTube and hitting that subscribe button. The G5 Hive Merchandise Stores is now live. Link in the YouTube comments, as well as pinned to our X page in the bottom of the screen here. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe button, like I mentioned earlier. And if you're watching us on X, please give us a follow, a like, and a retweet. And if you're listening to us in podcast form, please rate and review. Five stars only. We don't want anything less than a five star. Just like everything that we give you each and every week, five stars, nothing less what do you got for us, Justice? So if you've been paying attention the last couple of weeks, we started this, I don't know, three weeks ago, I think now. Um, and we kind of went through all the different awards. Um, and then we've kind of up, we've updated them one or two at a time, um, the weeks leading up to the awards. Um, you know, we did uh, Sean Dolak, who Sean Dolak didn't get the Burlesworth Award either again this week. Um he did not get the, the he, he didn't get named a finalist for the Butkus Award for best linebacker, which was just absolutely ludicrous. Um, but the the kid from Oregon won the Burles with the Worth Award tonight. I was watching that. The Burles Worth Award goes to the um, nation's best uh, whoever they were. They were a walk on at one point. Um, he was nominated. It was him, a kid from Oregon, and I forget who the third the third guy was, but it was also a a P four player. But anyway, um, so tonight we're going to talk about the Heisman and uh, the Hendricks Award. So, you know, today the Heisman finalists got announced. It's uh, running back Ashton Jainty, Boise State, wide receiver, cornerback Travis Hunter, Colorado, quarterback Dylan Gabriel from Oregon, and quarterback Cam Ward from Miami. Um, personally, you know, I think Bryson Daly deserved to go to New York. Um, I would probably put him in over Cam Ward, I think. Or, I mean, I, you can make the case for Dylan Gabriel, too. Um, but that's not what happened. Um, but, and I think the whole country knows it's really a two-horse race. Uh, it's Ashton Jainty versus Travis Hunter. Uh, we made the case for um, Ashton Jainty three weeks ago. Um, He's done nothing but strengthen his case, in my opinion. Um, and But probably the biggest argument, you see their stats here on the screen. Um, I don't have Travis's defensive stats. Can't fit everything on there. Uh, but I do have his off offensive stats. Um, Ashton Jinty, uh, 2,497 rushing yards, 30 total touchdowns, 
Uh, and this is probably the most impressive one. The next three are the most impressive, I guess. 1,882 yards after contact. Pretty sure that's good for number two in the country. So, like, that's how that's how impressive of a year he's having. His missed tackles, 135. Um, that's absolutely insane. And then 116 first downs. Travis Hunter, uh, his receiving stats, 92 receptions, 1,152 yards, 15 touchdowns, 396 yards after the catch, 23 missed tackles forced, and uh, 53 first downs. And he also plays defense. Um, I think he has four interceptions on the year. But I think, I think to me, you know, what is, what is, what is the Heisman Trophy about? What is it for? It's for the best player in college football. And I guess you can define that a lot of different ways. But to me, th this next this next question I've seen posed on social media kind of boils it down for me. And it, to me, is a resounding answer for who the, the best player in college football is. But, Luke, if we were to swap, put Ashton Janty on the Colorado Buffaloes, put Travis Hunter on the Boise State Broncos, do you think uh, Colorado is now a playoff team? Um, I think they're probably on the brink. I think probably yes, just because of the Big 12. Um, I also think, you know, offensive line goes into play a little bit. But, uh, Colorado's offensive line just isn't that great. But then I think we see Ashton Gentry get used in a different way that he got used here. Um, I think we see him being more utilized as a receiving back and, and getting catching balls out of the backfield and maybe lining up in the slot a little bit. So I still think, you know, we would see – I think his numbers would obviously be drastically different because I don't think um, – you know, he still had a whole bunch of missed tackles, so I think it still would have been very good. But honestly, maybe he would be even better because he would have X amount of receiving yards for, you know, this and this. Um, maybe, you know, it's not the um, almost 2,500. Maybe it's uh, closer to 1,800. And then you have maybe, you know, I don't even know what you'd have receiving. Let's just say 800 yards or something. Like it would be, it would still be pretty, pretty awesome. But I guess, like um, to me, like the important thing is not necessarily what his stats would be, but that he would elevate the team to being a playoff team, most likely. Yeah, I think so because then you're got another thing they got to worry about. Because right now, when you play Colorado, you don't have to really worry about them running the ball. If you put Travis Hunter on Boise State, you think Boise State is the number three seed and still, uh, still a playoff team? Probably not. Yeah, uh, that's that's the those are the conclusions I come to. Um, I think Ashton JT would make Colorado a playoff team. Uh, Travis Hunter would uh, negate the playoffs for Boise State. He just doesn't. He, he, you know, I'm not saying Travis Hunter isn't a good player. He is, um, and what he's doing is incredible. But like what Ashton Genty is doing is generational, right? Like you have we haven't seen this in a I don't know. Like Barry Sanders, right? And that was in the eighties. Um, and so, you know, I, I, to me, it's just a resounding. The resounding answer is that um, it's Ashton JT. But you know, if that argument's not good enough for you, I said, okay, well, let's look at their their best competition when they played the the team that they played that I would consider the best for Colorado and Travis. I would say that was Kansas State uh, at the time. Kansas State was number eighteen in the nation. And his stats against Kansas State, he had three catches for 26 yards um, on the offensive side. On the defensive side, he had two tackles, one solo tackle. That's it. Look at Ashton Jainty's, uh stats against the best competition that Boise State played, and that would be against the number one team in the nation, the Oregon Ducks. He had 192 yards rushing, three rushing touchdowns, two receptions for eight yards. He was the reason that, like, they had a shot to win that game. Um, just, you know, impressive, impressive season. Uh, Ashton has more rushing yards than 100 college football teams. 
So that's that's the team's total. He has more yards than 100 of them. Uh, he has more. He has 12 rushes of 50 or more yards. Do you know who the next closest is? No idea. Well, first of all, it's not it's not an individual player. It's a team. He has more 50 yard rushes. I mean, uh, than every team in the country, and he has 12 of them. The next closest is Notre Dame and Navy. They each have seven. You can look at 30-yard rushes, 40-yard rushes, 60-yard rushes, 70-yard rushes. And Ashton Genty has more of those than any team in the nation. Um, It's just, you know, I don't know. Like, to me, it's a slam dunk choice. Uh, Vegas will tell you it's a slam dunk for Travis Hunter. Um, I think um, it was said on – on national TV that if you only let the coaches voted vote for the Heisman, it'd be unquestioned that Ashton Jinty would win, would win because where he has taken this team, you know, not only has he, you know, put up, you know, generational stats, he's carried this team to a college football playoff and a bye. Ashton Jinty played Saturday. Did Travis Hunter play Saturday or Friday? No, he didn't. Um, and uh, he's not playing in the playoffs either. And um, so to me, it's it's a slam dunk, Ashton Jainty. I, I hope the voters do the right thing. Um, again, not trying to knock Travis Hunter. He's a great player. He's going to, you know, go on and, you know, go to the NFL and, and you know, and maybe he's going to get drafted higher, higher, in the NFL draft, and that's all fine and dandy, but that's not what the award's for. Uh, the award's for the the most outstanding player, and and in my mind, that there's just there's no doubt about it. It's it's Ashton Jainty. He's got the stats. He has taken his team to a level um, that great players do, and and that's what and that's what Ashton did. Um, and so, I just hope the uh, the voters do the right thing and um, vote for Ashton Jainty. I'm I'm like soup. I'm I was thinking about this the other night when I was you know thinking about you know what we were going to talk about and talk about Genty and like I feel so nervous. Like I just feel nervous that he's not going to win it. And, and and I don't and I feel like you know just with how media is and what they're you know what puts butts in seats. I am very much like. I think I've talked about this, you know, in some fashions, like as I get older and older, like I believe in conspiracy theories. I believe, you know, this is a business. I believe they're going to try to do things, you know, to help pump up, you know, their friends in the business and stuff. I mean, you can't, you can't, you don't have any facts around it, but it's like, that's what it feels like. But also like part of me is going to be shocked if, if he wins it, even though I believe he should, just because I don't know if I could get over the fact that, I can't believe that other people believe that yet. Be just because of all the hate or shade thrown on the G5 over the years. Um, I think that would be pretty monumental and like something that is groundbreaking. Yeah. I mean, like I said, he, he is a generational talent. He is putting up numbers that we haven't seen. in you know, like I said, since like the eighties, and, you know, and not only is he doing that, he's also elevated the play of his team. Um, and, and that's what great players do. And, you know, to me, that's it's a slam dunk for the Heisman. Um, I don't I don't disagree that Travis Hunter is a good player, great player. But he's he's not only he's, he's not the best cornerback. He's not the best receiver. Um, it's clear that Ashton Jainty is the is the best running back in the nation. That's. I don't think anyone would argue that point. Um, and so, you know, that and the fact that, you know, his play has elevated his team to, you know, the number three seed and a bye in, in the uh, in the college football playoffs, just pretty remarkable and, and a testament to his to his talent. So Ashton Jainty for Heisman, um, voters do the right thing. 
How do you feel when you switch to GEICO and save on your car insurance? It's like going to work on one Thursday morning and thinking to yourself, just one more day until Friday. But then somebody in the elevator says, happy Friday. Then you check your phone quickly and discover today is actually Friday. So yes, happy Friday, random stranger in the elevator. Happy Friday indeed. Yep, switching and saving with GEICO feels just like that. Get more with GEICO. All right, uh, the last one we want to talk about is the Hendrix Award. If you're not familiar with the uh, the Hendrix Award, it's named after Ted Hendrix, and and it goes to the best uh, defensive end edge in college football. And unlike a lot of the other awards, this one does have a history of, you know, giving it to lower level players. Uh, two years ago, um, it was an FCS guy that won, and so you, you look back in their history, and they do. I think, I think of all the awards, these these major awards, the Hendrix probably <coughs> does the best job. Um, I feel like so many of these other awards base it on like, well, he's going to be the best guy in the NFL, or he's the you know um, going to be the best NFL player, and that's not what the award is. The award, these awards are for college football and, and what they've done on the college football field. And I would say, you know, the Hendricks of all these awards has done the best job of rewarding that um, and not just playing the, Hey, this guy is going to be the number one overall draft pick. Um, but nonetheless, so the Hendricks award, um, they submitted, a, they have a final watch list. And I, I, I would venture to guess there's 12, 15 players on that list. Um, I didn't want to put all 12, 15 players on this graphic. I used my own judgment to to find who I thought maybe were the six best. And that's who is on this graphic. Um, And so, you know, we will, you know, if you're you're watching us on Twitter, watching us on X um, or YouTube, you feel free to play along. Um, We've got them labeled A, B, C, D, E, F. Tell us who you think should win. Um, player A has 60 tackles, 37 stops. Uh, so stops are defined by uh, third and fourth down stops uh, where you're stopping the opposing offense on uh, third and fourth down. Uh, player A has 60 tackles, 37 stops, 53 total pressures, 10 sacks, 20 tackles for loss, and a havoc rate of 16.9%. That player has the that's the top havoc rate in um, college football. Player B has 80 tackles, 42 stops, 61 total pressures, 16 and a half sacks, 21 tackles for loss, and a havoc rate of 14.2%. Player C has 84 tackles, 48 stops, 63 pressures, 17 sacks, 23 tackles for loss, havoc rate. Player D has 43 tackles, 34 stops, 49 total pressure, 16 sacks, 19 tackles for loss, havoc rate of 14.6%. Player E, 60 tackles, 38 stops, 39 pressures, 12 and a half sacks, 19 tackles for loss, 11.3% havoc rate. And finally, player F, has 54 tackles, 35 stops, 49 pressures, 11 sacks, 19 tackles for loss, and a havoc rate of 15.9%. So if you're watching us, uh, chime in on the comments. Who do you think should win the award based on uh, these stats for the best edge rusher, the best defensive end in college football? Uh, Luke, who would you pick? C. C. Yeah, to me, like, it kind of boils down to really, I think, two guys, probably B and C, right? I mean, they're they're kind of head and shoulders above everybody else when you look at all the stats. Yep. Um, I mean, I would tell you 80 tackles from a defensive ends, that's pretty damn impressive. You don't see that very often. Um, and, and the stats show that, right? Not that see these other these other uh four guys aren't deserving, but just look at their tackles. Like it's like, tw- no, it's like, see, I'm like 84 tackles. You've got, so you've got the most, most tackles of the group. 
the most stops um, for the group, the most sacks, the most tackle for losses, uh, the second best havoc rate. So it's like you're you're just doing a lot of your work behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, absolutely. Or at least all right. Bit. Yeah, <laughs> I will say two of these players on this list are G five. Uh, the rest are P four. Um, so without further ado, I will reveal who each player is. Uh, player A, Abdul Carter, uh, Penn State. Player B, Donovan Ezeruaku, Boston College. Player C, Mike Green from Marshall. Player D, Antoine Powell Ryland, Virginia Tech. Player E, Trey White, San Diego State. And player F, TJ Parker from Clemson. Um, you know, you know, like to me, it's, it's comes down to between Donovan and Mike green. And I give the nod to, to Mike green. Like you said, um, he's either number one or number two in every category, um, every statistical category, uh, you know, from a, a defensive end standpoint, um, just a all around impressive season. Um, someone that folks didn't know about before the year, right. Unless they watched us. Um, we talked about Mike Green, I don't know, back in July, August, or I'm sorry, early July, late June. Um, we talked about Mike Green. He was a breakout player for the Thundering Herd this year, and boy, did he break out, but he, he broke out in a big way. Um, so just another reason to continue to listen to us in the offseason. We talk about guys like Mike Green uh, that you folks uh, may not know about. But, uh, you know, his mar- I think his resume – you know, stands out above the rest. You know, if you look at all uh, defensive linemen in college football, uh, he's number one in sacks, number one in stops, number one in tackles for loss. He is number two in havoc rate um, to uh, Abdul Carter, who's number one, and he's number two in total pressures. Um, And I think the guy's number one in total pressures is not a finalist for the award. Um, He's got a lot of pressures, but the rest of his stats aren't aren't uh, aren't that great so yeah uh mike green at marshall um and this you know again i think he deserves it um and the hendrix has done a great job in years past of truly you know finding some guys that aren't necessarily well known um or in the public eye and they've they, they, they've done a good job of recognizing the best uh defensive end in the past and um hoping this year is no different and then we get to see uh, Mike Green uh, raise that trophy. I believe it's uh, the 15th when they're doing all those awards. Is that right? I think, Luke, December 15th. We've talked about it a couple times, but I think it's I think it's December 15th when all those awards uh, will get announced. So Mike Green for the Hendrix. All right. A little bit shorter of a show for us this week. Uh, thank you all for tuning in all year long. But come back and join us next week as we discuss what happened in that Army-Navy game and the salutes to Veteran Bowl, as well as look forward to the next set of G5 Bowl games. And as always, we bring you up to date on all the latest news and happenings in the world of G5 college football. Again, if you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe button. We are three away from 500. Help us get to 500. If you're watching us on X, please give us a retweet, a like, and a follow. And if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, please subscribe. Leave those five-star ratings and reviews. Thank you all for your support. Until next time, we are the G55.